How did we get into the situation? An entire window out of our camper. Tick, 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 tick. It is homemade pizza night here on the Runaway Ranch. We've chased around a couple leaks with the roof. I'm feeling pretty strong these days, so I feel like I can lift it no problem. What has happened here at the Runaway Ranch since we last left you guys? We have been just grinding on different camper renovations and getting it ready to move in. We have moved the camper to its official home here at the ranch, which feels so good right on the gravel pad. And we've been tackling other little projects like the fire pit and the rainwater collection here as well to make everything nice and comfortable and ready for winter. This week, you catch us just three days before we plan to move into our new camper home, but there's still a lot to do. We have a leak in our roof. We have some plumbing to finish. We have to finish installing our new heat and much more. But hopefully we get it all done in time this evening to celebrate with our new pizza oven and fire pit. We're Matt and Cass, a couple of adventure chasers seeking the roads less traveled in today's world. For the last three years, we've been living on the road. First in our bus home, Lady May, then our rad van Jolene. Our journey brought us through the wildest parts of the United States, from the crystalline springs of Florida to the incredible peaks of Idaho and then spending six months internationally traveling all through Mexico. But today, we put the van in park to take on a new challenge, the building of a fully off-grid homestead in rural Tennessee. All right, so first up on the project list is finishing the installation of our new heater, which is a diesel heater. This is our diesel heater, and we are actually going to have it external from the camper. Normally we do these installed both in our bus and our van installed internally in it, but we're gonna be setting this up to a switch that will allow it to run basically whenever it hits a temperature threshold. And just because of my like slight fear of having this internal while we're not here, uh, we're actually gonna do the installation externally and run the hose into the camper itself. We had a pretty good idea that we would be swapping out the propane heater to a diesel heater to begin with, but the real clincher on that was that our propane heater didn't work in the camper. Rather than going ahead and trying to fix it, we just went ahead and bought what we thought we wanted to begin with. Now, I think we've said this in another video, we're going with the diesel heater because we've had really good experience with them. They're very affordable, they're very efficient, but most importantly, as a lot of people have expressed concerns with moisture buildup within in campers. Diesel heaters are a huge, huge help with this over a propane heater. One of the reasons that we picked this spot to put our camper permanently is that it gets all of this passive solar throughout the day. So what's really nice is that throughout the day, especially in the winter, because there's no leaves on the trees, it'll just get hit by the sun. So it'll keep us warm, keep us nice and toasty in there all through the day. And then in the summer, this actually all gets covered by trees. This was the only place on the property in the summer that we were able to park Jolene this year because we were able to get some relief from these trees. So we knew when we wanted to put the camper somewhere that this was going to be its home. We have a couple really quick steps to do uh, before we hopefully get this working. And it's simply that I have the electrical wires from the existing furnace. I just wanna run a voltage meter to confirm which one's positive and negative before I set it into the diesel heater, then pour some diesel in, set up our initial settings, and then give it a test run. Okay, so I have Cass inside and she can control the DC power going to these wires so that I can have her just flip it on to test, then flip it off so I can make the connection, then flip it back on to actually um, run the diesel heater. All right, hon, can you flip that switch on? Can you go ahead and turn that back on? You can see the little screen here on the diesel heater, but that is now on. So that means we are getting power to the heater. A couple things we got to check and then we can fire this up for a test run. So while Matt is just playing and adjusting the diesel heater, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a tour and a very, very realistic tour of what it looks like. Messy and all, tools and all um, of what it looks like here in the camper thus far. So starting over here at our couch, which is the new couch that you saw us putting through the window. So you may be wondering, how did we get into the situation with an entire window out of our camper? Because I get what I want. I wanted this couch. We found it a couple weeks back and Matt was like, there's no way it's fitting through the camper door. And we searched for couches. We searched for couches, couldn't find anything comfortable while still giving the vibe I was looking for. So we went back to that thrift store and guess what? They still had the couch that I wanted originally. He decided he'd make it happen for me. So we're taking the window out and it's going through the window.
How do you feel about this endeavor? It's all right. While we got a leaking roof, I don't exactly love ripping a sealed window out that doesn't currently leak, but you know, it's a cool couch. <laughs> Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> now we're gonna try to do this without our friends Blaine and Ness to help us, but we will see if that happens. I'm feeling pretty strong these days. You gotta take the feet off to get it in. Yeah, I gotta also take the feet off to get in, but I'm feeling pretty strong these days, so I feel like I can lift it no problem. Feeling that strong, help me flip it back over. All right. It's not overly ideal to be taking the feet off of the couch, but it is what it is. We need to custom do the feet anyways to make it exactly the height that it needs because we have a little, like a little lip in the living room. Guys, like look at this freaking thing. It's so cool and it is seriously so comfortable, which that's what we were having a problem. We were having a problem finding quality, comfortable, but also bitching, you know what I mean? But this one, all three. Look at it from here. Like the tiles like look from the kitchen and pan. So cool. Really, really vibey. Really cool. vibey. Fireplace. Ah, uh, rug. Yep. Cozy. Yep. Super freaking cozy. Yep. It looks so good. Matt adjusted the legs so it is up propped perfectly. And it is obviously Bubba Doo's approved. He loves it. The cat and the dog have been up here on this couch, letting the sun come in at this perfect angle all day. Not only does it give us that cool, like retro kind of vibe that I was really going for, it is extremely comfortable. Can't wait to get a rug in here and get some decor and stuff up on the walls to really pull it all together. But this is a one of a kind piece. And if you know anything about us, we like funky stuff. So we are so stoked to find this baby. Now the sink has been roughed in. We haven't permanently put it in, which is on the list of things to do today, but we have a new faucet and a new sink. This sink is a massive. The reason we did it so big was because the hole was already there. Now some people might be like, Cass, that sink is ridiculous for this size of camper. And to be honest, yes. Yes, it is, but I love it. I can imagine like our little chickens in here when they need a bath and just like whatever we need, hosting big events. Like we don't know how long we're gonna be living in this camper full time. So having the space to spread out like this and have a big sink like this is going to be huge. Once again, this is an extremely realistic tour of what the camper looks like right now. Matt finished up some of the trim on our backsplash. So our backsplash is completely done with the painted wall and then the insert above the window, which we love. And he trimmed it all with actually reused material from the camper. So they had these huge mirrors in here that were just held up by trim and he just reused those to make this beautiful edge. So there is your very realistic tour of what we have done inside the camper. All right, diesel's in. I think everything else is set up right. So let's turn it on, we'll let it heat up, and then we'll go check the uh, air outputs in the camper. Exciting. Gosh, I hope this works. This is such a big turning point to be able to be living in the camper, especially with these cold nights coming in here. So if this works, we're moving in soon, baby. No pugs are on, it's always a really good sign. One thing about diesel heaters is that sometimes you get a dud, which sucks. Do you hear that? 
That's the click we want. Anyone like. that has relied on a diesel heater for heat knows that that is an exciting sound. <laughs> <laughs> that is the, a lot of people complain about it. Cass and I friggin' dance to it. Yeah. Because that means shit's about to get warm. That means stuff <laughs> is about to get warm. So we always get so lit when we hear that tick, 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 uh, uh, uh. We get lit every time. Get up, dig it up, dig it up, dig it up, dig it up, ooh, ooh, dig it up, dig it up. Tick, 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 tick. There it is. Oh, you hear the Because that means it is exhausting. I see the exhaust, honey. It's coming out. Now, no air codes, no air codes, no air codes. Two bars of heat. Tick, 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 when we get four bars, we'll go into the camper. Yeah, four bars will go into the camper and make sure that it's working good. We have warm air coming in. It's coming out? Yep. Oh yeah. There is heat and that is what is important. It's actually been my worry with this is a, uh, cause if you think, I, I know a lot of people that do bus conversions, they do two diesel heaters, one at either end. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if that's part of the reason why. Another reason that this will blow a lot less is a lot of people have concern with our water lines freezing. What's really nice about this old camper, we, if we're looking at the bottom, we have the bottom floor and it's got about an inch of insulation. Then we have all of our HVAC and water lines running in the subfloor. And that HVAC, they have a, like a three split where all of the air is just blowing into that subfloor to keep those water lines warm, which is really, really good. But the problem is because that's on the line that comes back to our bedroom, that's going to decrease the airflow that's coming back here. But we know that this is all learning and figuring it out, but good there's thing heat. is there's heat. Now it's just fine tuning. All right, so we're up on my not so favorite place and that's the roof. So we've chased around a couple leaks with the roof and we got it narrowed down to one, but the last patches that I did must not have been where they were stemming from. There's no obvious spot of where it's coming from, but I have another couple ideas of where it could be. So we're going to go along and patch any of those areas up. Now, yes, building a carport over this would solve all of our leak issues, but that takes time, that takes money. And at the moment, that's not in the wheelhouse. We are considering it as an option in the future. So for now, it's a bunch of lap sealant. It's a bunch of a turnabon tape. It's a bunch of silicone. Let's get to work. So I'm using Dicor products self-leveling lap sealant um, for these edges that I'm dropping in. We've used this resealing the bus, the van, and now this camper. Uh, the self-leveling action is super, super helpful because it will just settle into the gaps and cracks that may be present. A little tip, if it's a cooler day like it is here today, uh, either leave the tube sitting in the sun or bring it inside where it's warmer. Uh, the reason for that is when it gets too cold, and I've done this before, this is how I know, if it gets too cold, that self-leveling action will be a lot slower and it'll actually start to cure before it settles down like you want it to. But if you keep the, the goo inside warm enough, then it'll actually do what you want it to do. got the lap sealant on in all of the areas that I had any concern. Um, next up, I'm just gonna do a little patch. If you see right here, this is somewhere that they did have a bond of sealant and it is in terrible, terrible shape. Well, I know that this isn't causing the current leak that we have. Also, I have no reason to believe that this is leaking because where it is and where water would track down from it, we don't have any noticeable leaks. But because it's in such bad shape, I am going to go ahead and patch this up. And for this, I am using Eternabon tape. I don't know what brand this is, but basically it's uh, roof sealant tape. It's 
seam is all resealed with the Eternabond tape and I am ready to get off this roof. Something we are quickly realizing is how fast the days go here in the winter. In the summer, I felt like we had all, all day to just kind of bum around, do whatever we needed to do, but the winters, the days are short. pizza night here on the Runaway Ranch and we are using our new Impava pizza oven which we have used once before tonight and we friggin love it. It makes really really great pizzas. Our idea when we got here originally was to build our own brick oven pizza. Um, very ambitiously I thought that was going to be something that we would have done by now and it's probably not something we'll do for another year or so. So when Impava reached out to us about this pizza oven, we were super excited, because in rural Tennessee, it's a little hard to find good pizza. I'm a big pizza guy. Today was a busy day, but I actually woke up at 5 a.m. and started this sauce. Um, so I'm hoping it's pretty good. I think I got a little heavy handed on the salt, but that's all right. For pizza, I think that's good. So we got homemade dough, homemade sauce, and pava pizza oven. I'm very excited about it. We're getting a little crazy with some of the toppings, but we'll see how it comes out. Bye bye. Pizza, pizza. Pizza. <laughs> pizza, pizza. All right, so we got a pepperoni pizza for our first pizza going in. We got the oven at 620 degrees right now, but I like it up at 700, but 620 is plenty to throw this in. Let's get it. While the pizza's in, this is very high powered. Propane is what we're working with right now and that's what allows us to get the temperature so high. This pizza oven also doubles as a wood fired pizza oven, which is awesome because that's actually what I prefer. For days that you've been working the entire day, the gas side is a lot better for this. And I got the fire going over there. Can't maintain two fires at once. So um, awesome part about this gas, when we have the temperature this high, pizza will cook in anywhere from two to four minutes. So it won't be long, but we'll start stretching the dough on the next one. Wow, babe. First pizza coming out. If you know anything about buffalo, you gotta do the small cup pepperonis, burnt edges, and a cup of nasty dirty grease in there. <laughs> a little Western New York and a little downstate New York. Right, baby? Just like our love, baby. Just like our love. <laughs> and while we love Tennessee, We'll keep the pizza making to our uh, New York roots. So if you caught our gate video, you know that our friends Blaine and Ness moved onto the property just above us, and they are here enjoying this beautiful pizza night with us. the pizzas are out we got five pizzas some have olives and artichokes some have anchovies on them some are just pepperoni um, but what I do now is I reheat all of them and what's nice is if you make the pizzas the size of the spatula that comes with it 
you can fit about four pizzas back in there to reheat. We love this pizza oven so far. I really want to get the wood going in it, uh, which we should do soon. And if you're in the market for a pizza oven, I like uh, espresso machines is the first thing when I researched them that taught me the difference between a machine and an appliance. And the idea behind that is a machine is like what you professionally might use. An appliance is just like a little cute thing that you might have at home that kind of does the job. In the world of pizza ovens, this is a machine. So we have a discount code for this Impava pizza oven in the description below. That's gonna get you 8% off. It is a uh, higher price pizza oven, but again, that's because this isn't a little tabletop stove. This is the real deal. So if you want to make some good pizzas at home, check out Impava. Like your pizza oven, baby? I do. I'm excited. It's awesome. I want to cook with wood next, though. <laughs> this world is not my home. I'm just still passing through. If heaven's not my home, then hell will have 